Hey guys, <clears throat> I am fixing to paint the cutest door hanger you have ever seen. <laughs> well, I say that. I feel like that's the, the case every time I paint a new door hanger. But in this case, this one is going to be for a baby. And it's going to be um, a Simba door hanger. How many of you guys are fans of The Lion King? I have actually um, watched that movie probably dozens of times. And I've even been to see Lion King on Broadway in New York. And so I'm a huge Lion King fan. And when somebody messaged me and asked if I could do um, a Lion King door hanger for a baby nursery, I couldn't really turn that down. So <laughs> um, I started brainstorming and coming up with ideas. Charlie, Mama's doing a video. Go play. Hey, Mama. What? Okay. Okay. He'll be fine. He's He can clean it up himself. <laughs> you hear Charlie? She said, Travis got mud on his leg. <laughs> so, okay. I'm trying to get my video pulled up because I've got my camera just far enough away that it's going to be a little difficult for me to read comments. So, I'm pulling it up on my laptop so that I can read your comments a little easier. But, um, this is the shape and it's going to be baby Simba. It's going to be the cutest. Now, I'm going to show you what I did ahead of time. Can you see the pencil lines? Um, I kind of drew out his eyes and his nose and a few things and then I don't know if you can see or not but I used a white um, charcoal pencil where is it and I will show you what it looks like oh there it is it's general's charcoal white and so it's kind of like a white colored pencil and so ahead of time I have gone through and put marks everywhere that um, to indicate the different colors because I knew once I started um, filming this live I would forget my plan and forget what I wanted it to look like so by doing this let me make sure the volumes turned down there we go now I should be able to read your comments so um, by doing this on here and mapping it out ahead of time, I can go ahead and do the video with you guys and I won't forget what was supposed to be what color. Good morning, Karen and Macy. Thank you, Macy. I think it's gonna be so cute. Hi, Robin, how are you guys? Okay, hopefully I can still see your comments well on here because, um, okay. I think I see them popping up. Yeah, live two days in a row, Jessica. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Oh, uh, Sarah, you said your daughter loves Simba. Okay, um, I have got a bunch of these Americana paints from Deco Art that I'm going to be using. They sent them to me in the mail, and so I have picked out these colors kind of as my color palette. Let me show you what they look like. So the pink is going to be the nose, and then we're using um, a light yellow and then like a dark, um, this one's called True Ochre, which it's kind of a... I don't know a golden color and then we've got like a light brown and a dark brown so that's what we're using um, the names of these if you want to write them down are burnt umber honey brown cadmium yellow true ochre and cotton candy and I might use some black in here I, I, oh and I'm using white also so um, I'm gonna try to answer your questions as I paint Am I going to sell the template? Yes, Ginger, if everybody's interested, I would more, be more than happy to sell the template or the blank, whichever you wanna order. I don't have them up on the website yet, but when I get them on the website, I will link them to the comments of this video for you guys. Also, if you didn't know, I have started a free pop-up group um, for painting door hangers. And if you want to join it, all you have to do is comment the word join j-o-i-n in the comments and it will send you a link to go over and join that group it's a pop-up group and a pop-up group means that it's temporary and so um the group will only be in existence from now until august 1st and then august 1st it'll be deleted and will disappear from facebook but the reason we're doing the pop-up group is to kind of give you guys like a little taste of what it would be like to be in the painters clubhouse for those of you who are not in it already and I have already put a free tutorial in there for how to paint a rooster door hanger. And I've included the template for you guys for free. And what I want to do is I want to challenge each of you. If you have never painted your own door hanger before and you've never cut one out of wood before, I want to challenge you to give it a try. I want to challenge you to practice using a jigsaw or even a scroll saw and practice cutting your own door hanger. 
and just see if you can do it because um, if you've never used a jigsaw before it can be kind of intimidating so you know if you've got a dad or an uncle or a brother or somebody who knows how to use one maybe they've even got one make sure you've got the right kind of blade you'll need a scroll blade, a scroll blade with at least 10 or 12 TPI tips per inch I think it's even better if you can find a scroll blade that has 20 TPI so um, if you want to know which uh, one, which exact brands I use, you can go to my resource page at southernadornmentsdecor.com and click on resource page up at the top, and um, that will show you the exact brand and type of things that I purchase and use. So um, I would love to see your rooster door hangers after you get those painted, and I'm going to be doing some more tutorials and little things in there. Now, this is not taking the place of Painter's Clubhouse. Like I said, it's kind of to give you a little taste of what the Painter's Clubhouse is like. So I would love for you guys to join that group. There's already been some amazing posts in there. People have been sharing pictures of door hangers they've made and asking questions. And so it's a great place to, you know, meet some other people who make door hangers and, um, learn from them because if you have a question about door hangers I guarantee somebody in there will have an opinion and give you an answer and so I'm excited about it I think it's gonna be fun okay I've got his eyes painted <laughs> and I just did them white they're probably gonna need another coat but that'll get us started I'm trying to make sure he's in camera very well okay what brush is that? Okay, the brush that I just used, I have, I think I have these brushes linked on the resource list as well. These are, um, this one I think is a size six. It's a flat tipped brush. So um, it's it's very square on the tip. And I like, the, I like the control that I have with those kind of brushes. Let me put down here in the comments the resource, the link to the resource list so that you guys can go over there if you want to. And find these brushes oh goodness I've got this new computer and I'm not used to the mouse pad on it yet it um, constantly it's very sensitive and it feels like if I just barely touch anything it messes up what I'm typing okay I think I got that link put in there correctly <laughs> we will see so, if you want to join that new group, no, I'm not a lefty. It's just because I'm like in mirror mode with the selfie camera. And so, it makes it look like I'm painting with my left hand, but I'm not. I'm a right-handed girl. Okay, I'm going to start by painting all of these outer areas. <coughs> um, this true ochre color, it's kind of a golden yellow. Are angled brushes uh, easier than flat brushes? Honestly, uh, Gray, I have never used angled brushes. I think it's just a personal preference of mine, but I know a lot of people in the Painters Clubhouse and a lot of people who have told me that they love using angled brushes. I just personally do not. So um, I have always used flat tipped or filbert brushes or round brushes. And I think it's just because that's kind of what I learned with, and I just never tried anything else. And so now to hold an angled brush and paint almost feels awkward at times to me because I've gotten used to painting with something different. Can you guys see okay? Um, I can try to get the camera a little closer if you want me to so that you guys can see closer up what I'm doing. This true ochre color, it reminds me of the apple barrel golden sunset color. So if you use apple barrel paints, that's what this color reminds me of. It's very similar. Yay, Wendy, you joined. <laughs> Good afternoon, Patricia. I don't know if y'all's comments are popping up live or not, but um, I feel like I'm seeing them a little bit delayed. I apologize if I don't respond immediately. If I miss any questions, I usually go back at the end of the live video and scroll through my phone and look for any questions that I missed, and I'll comment back to you if I missed any of them. Whoops, I got a little on his eye there. It's all right, I'm gonna paint another coat of white there so it doesn't really matter. Hi, 
Hi, Janine. Happy Saturday. <laughs> hey, Karen. Uh, is this pattern on the web to purchase? Not yet, but I, I, after this video, I will try this afternoon to get it put on the website because I know there are a few people interested. I didn't think about doing it beforehand. Of course, you guys are going to want this after you, see it, after you see it painted. So, um, I will try my best to get it put on there this afternoon. And after it's put on there, I will comment underneath this video with the link for you guys. So, you can go and buy the template or the blank. Right now, I'm just going around his eyes and his eyebrows and just trying to get this true ochre color laid down. I have had received so many sweet messages lately from people saying that they found me on YouTube or that um, they started painting door hangers because of me and it's just so sweet it makes me feel so good to know that you know me doing this has enriched other people's lives because they've learned to do something maybe that they hadn't tried before because I know painting door hangers has changed my life um, it's now a full-time income for our family and it's a creative outlet for me and I just I truly enjoy it and so I love getting messages from people like that and I've gotten several of them lately that, from people saying that they had never painted a door hanger until they saw one of my videos and they felt encouraged and thought that you know it made them feel like they could do it and so with this group that I've started um, the the door hanger painting tips pop-up group um, I'm hoping to encourage some some other people maybe that haven't tried it before to give it a try and um, so if you're wanting to join that group, comment join and it will send you a direct link. And after the video is over, I will go and approve all the people that want to join that group. It's a free group. And like I said, it's a pop-up group. So it's only going to be available and only going to be in existence until August the 1st. And then it will go away. And the reason for that is because after the pop-up group ends, I want to encourage you all that if you enjoyed the experience that you got in the pop-up group, to join the Painters Clubhouse group because it's going to be reopening for new enrollment on July 26th through the 31st. So if you know of anybody who's been wanting to join that group, let them know that to put it on their calendar, July 26th through the 31st, they can um, sign up again. And so um, I'm excited to add some new people to the group and um, teach some new people how to paint door hangers. Oh, also, the business course that I had opened up at the end of May, beginning of June, you guys may remember me talking about that, that teaches you how to start your own paint party business. I've received several messages from people who um, missed out on that course and still wanted to join. It is too late to join, but I am telling those people that I'm going to reopen that course in the fall, probably, most likely, late September. But I haven't decided on a date yet, so as soon as I have the, that date decided upon, I will let you guys know. But um, if you want to be notified of things like that, just hop over to my website, southernadornmentsdecor.com, and join the mailing list. Because I do send out emails about that kind of stuff. Um, it might go to your spam folder, though, so if you want to make sure and not miss it, then you need to add me to your contacts. So... How much is Painters Clubhouse? Jessica, it's going to be $37 a month. And we will be teaching two new door hanger tutorials every month. You will get a template for each door hanger that we teach. And um, if you're not comfortable or not able cutting your, to, to cut your own door hangers, you will have the option to purchase the blanks um, at a discounted rate to paint at home. But my goal is to teach you all to paint, cut your own blanks because it's so much more affordable if you're cutting them yourself. And it's faster because you don't have to wait for them to come in the mail. You can just cut them out and paint them immediately. Um, yay, Carrie, I'm so glad. Uh, no, Lynn, currently you're paying, if you're in Painters Clubhouse right now, you're paying $27 a month. Not 42. I'm not sure where 42 came from. Yay, Beverly. I'm so glad you're enjoying the clubhouse. I am too. I'm really enjoying not just like the teaching part of it, 
but getting to see your all's progress and those posts, like I said, when people say, this is the first door hanger I ever painted or the first door hanger I ever cut. And they're just so proud of themselves because there's a sense of um, accomplishment when you do something that you've never done before. And so I love getting those messages from people that are really enjoying the clubhouse. Also, if you don't want to miss out on signing up for Painters Clubhouse, being in this free group, the Door Hanger Painting Tips group, um, we, I'll definitely like be messaging you guys and notifying you guys in there so that you don't miss out on it. Um, so, you know, on the off chance that emails like that do go to spam, if you're in that group, you should get notifications if you're signed up for notifications. I'm going to have to speed up this painting. My stomach's starting to grow. <laughs> This flat brush is not the best for going around these tight little areas like this, but I'm like so close to being done with this color that there's no point in changing brushes right now. I feel like this is the perfect color for Simba. It's got a little bit of a hint of orange in it, but it's very um, golden yellow. Okay, so let me show you kind of up close what we've got so far. He kind of looks like a monkey, doesn't he? And the lighting's kind of weird, sorry. Okay, Allison says, what do you use to cut your templates? I've had a band saw, but that thing scares me. Now my husband's deployed. I prefer a jigsaw. And Allison, I put the link to my resource list in the comments here. It, if you go over there, it will show you the exact brand of jigsaw and type of jigsaw and the blades that I use. So hop over there and check it out. I don't know much about band saws, so I couldn't really say. Uh, Deb says, have you used the new brand of paint before today? Uh, yes, that sign that I painted that said welcome that had all the colors on it, I used the um, deco art paint on it as well and I loved it. So, um, so far so good. It's going on very evenly, very smoothly. It seems to be drying quickly, which I like. I don't like to wait around for things to dry. And so, um, I love it so far. Okay, now I'm going to switch to a lighter yellow. This one is called cadmium yellow. I'm afraid it might be too light, so let me just squirt some out here and start applying it. And if it looks too light, um, I may mix a little bit of the true ochre in with it. Yeah, it feels a little too light. Okay, so I'm going to do a few drops of the true ochre because I don't want it to be too like in your face bright yellow. I kind of want it to just be a lighter version of the one we just used. Okay, that wasn't quite enough. Let me do a couple more drops. If you're mixing colors, I highly recommend only do a drop or two, stir, and then check, and then a drop or two more, and maybe even just start painting with it and just see. See, that didn't make much of a difference. It's going to take more than just a couple of drops. You never really know. So I'm just making a lighter version of the true ochre color that I just used by mixing it with this cadmium yellow. Okay, that's a little bit better because it kind of warmed up this color and made it a little bit more um, similar to the true ochre, but it's quite a bit lighter than the true ochre. It's a sunny yellow. Something popped up on my screen. Yay, Michelle, I'm glad you decided to join the group. Lynn says, I think it was for the class painting stuff. Oh, Lynn, that was probably the virtual paint party where I was shipping door hangers to you. I'm not doing that anymore, but that may be what you're remembering. That was a while back. I stopped that back in April, I believe. Okay, so this color also goes on his face. Um, what is the size of this door hanger? Um, I, I always have my guy to cut it 20 inches on the longest side. And so he uses a laser cutting machine. So he just types that number in and it figures up like, you know, length or width, whatever's proportional. And so I believe it, it looks like it's a little bit taller than it is wide. So it's probably 20 inches tall. And then whatever, you know, is, um, proportional for the width. I just dripped that paint right on there. 
I think the one thing that people get so hung up about with painting stuff like this is they worry so much about getting it perfect. And it doesn't really have to be perfect. Um, you know, if you add enough detail to something, if you add outlines and highlights and things like that, those little things are gonna distract from the little imperfections that your eye is drawn to normally. So um, if, you, if it feels like it, you know, you're focusing too heavily on one little imperfection, try adding a little bit more detail somewhere else or even just putting a bow on something sometimes makes a big difference. Okay, I'm gonna have to mix just a little bit more of this color. At this point, I feel like it's probably two-thirds or half and half, half cadmium yellow and half true ochre. I'm so glad I mapped out these colors ahead of time by, by writing on the board what color goes where because, you know, once I start painting, I get carried away and I forget and then I start painting the wrong color in the wrong area. So by mapping it out ahead of time, it saves me a lot of time. I don't have to think about it so much. I can just enjoy the painting process and talk with you guys. Okay. So you don't cut your own anymore. Callie, I cut my own for the first year and a half that I was in business. No, sorry, two and a half years. Last fall, I finally started hiring someone to cut them with a jigsaw. And that worked out pretty well for a while. And then I found someone in my hometown who had a laser cutting machine. Matter of fact, he has five laser cutting machines in his shop. And so um, he will cut them for me and I just send him my template, my digital template. And he uses his laser cutting machine to cut them for me. So it has saved me tons of time because I can spend more time painting and less time cutting, which I don't enjoy the cutting part. Somebody in one of my groups last night said, the cutting part was actually her favorite part, which is funny because it's actually my least favorite part, but um, it's funny how we're all different like that. Okay, I'm gonna start probably with the color for his eyes because it's a really dark brown and I may end up mixing colors again. And I like the dark brown for the eyes. Let me switch to a filbert brush. This is the Burnt Umber. Um, I'm gonna use it on his eyebrows and his eyeballs. Vicki says, Painter's Clubhouse is awesome. If we're in there, do we need to join the pop-up? Yes, Vicki, just because there's going to be stuff in the pop-up group that's new that um, is additional teaching. So, I mean, it will benefit you to go ahead and join the pop-up group even though you're in the Painter's Clubhouse. But it, like I said, the pop-up group is just a temporary group. It's not going to take the place of Painter's Clubhouse. It's only going to be around for about six weeks and then it's going to go away again. So um, feel free to hop in there even if you are already in the Painter's Clubhouse because there is stuff I'm going to be teaching that you can learn. So I'd love to have you hop over there and join that group. And if any of you guys know somebody who enjoys painting or you think might enjoy this, you are more than welcome to add them to that group on your own. Like you don't have to, you know, you can just send them the link that um, is in there or you can, I think there's a button to invite and you can manually add them yourself um, to the group. So you can add as many people as you want and um, they'll be able to see the same stuff that you're seeing and get the, the templates and the videos and all that fun stuff. The more the merrier. So if anybody's just now joining us and you want to join that free group that I'm talking about, the free pop-up group, you can join by typing in the word join in the comments. It will send you a link to your Facebook Messenger with the exact link to the group. And after this live video is over with, I will go over there and add all of those people to the group. There's already a rooster door hanger template in, and video in there that you guys can get started with. And there is a door hanger, or uh, a jigsaw tutorial for how to use a jigsaw to cut a door hanger. So it's got, somebody told me that they watched it the other day and it, it was really helpful. So 
Um, I feel like it's a good video for you guys. If you've never cut with a jigsaw, maybe it will encourage you to give it a try. Okay, it's looking more like Simba. What do you think? Ah, is he not the cutest? Okay, I don't think there's any more dark brown spaces on here. No. Okay, so now is the light brown. And the brown that I had picked out is honey brown, but I believe it's a little too light. So I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of this burnt umber to create a custom color. I want it to be a little lighter than the burnt umber, but not quite so dark as the other one. Let's see, let's mix it with this. Not dark enough. So this is honey brown and burnt umber mixed together. And it's just kind of making a, a warm brown color. And I'm gonna try it out right here. Oh, that's that's good. I like that. So I read something really interesting today on Facebook, and who knows if it's true, but you know, um, the guy who played um, the Cowardly Lion in The Wizard of Oz, apparently his costume weighed 90 pounds and was made from two real lion skins. Is that not crazy? That just made me think of that when I was painting this, but I just thought that was just crazy, like that it was made from real lion fur and that it weighed so much. He had to have been burning up while filming. <laughs> Callie is encouraging. She said, don't be discouraged with the jigsaw. It's a breeze once you get the hang of it, especially for the right blade. Yes, Callie, the blade makes all the difference. I totally agree. If you're using the wrong kind of blade, you are going to be so frustrated and you're going to be like, why can't I get this? But once you get the right kind of blade, it's going to feel like so much easier. Um, and it will feel a little awkward at first because it's something new that you haven't tried before. Um, you know, it's kind of a new skill. So don't give up on it after your very first door hanger if you feel like that was difficult. Give it, you know... Cut out like 10 door hangers and then decide whether it's for you or not because it's definitely not something that's just going to overnight be easy for you. Um, it took me probably a few months to really get comfortable with it and then even a few more months to get fast, you know, because over time, like it does feel like, oh, that took a long time to cut that out, you know. I, it used to take me like two hours to cut 10 door hangers and then... You know, last fall when I was still cutting my own door hangers, I could probably cut out 10 in about 20 minutes. So it's it's definitely something that you will improve and get so much faster at as you go. Okay, that's the only places that I have that light brown color is on his little feet and his tail. Okay. Maybe that's why he was always crying. I'm not sure I understand what you were talking about. Okay, and then this color is going to be his nose. It's called Cotton Candy. I love Cotton Candy. And then um, I'm just going to use my little filbert tip brush because it's smaller and I didn't want to use a great big brush to do this area. How many of you have started saving egg cartons to put your paint in after watching me? <laughs> I'm just curious. Painting in egg cartons has changed my game. It's been so much nicer. Like, the paint stays wet longer. It's so much easier when mixing and making colors. And it's easy cleanup because you just fold it up and throw it in the garbage. <laughs> Sarah has. Felicia has. <laughs> oh, the 90-pound costume. I understand. Yes, the Lions costume. <laughs> he was always crying. <laughs> Bless his heart. Okay. Um, there's a couple places I need to touch up, and then we will go back. And um, I thought I was going to need to do another coat of white, but it really looks good now that it's dry. So I'm just going to touch up this spot that I messed up. Where I got the yellow on top of the white. And then we're going to go back and add some black lines and stuff to really make this pop because it looks good so far, but it needs um, some definition. So this is what I meant by adding more detail to make um, your flaws less noticeable. So like if you're looking closely, you would be like, oh, there's a little flaw there and there's a little flaw there and I can still see my pencil lines there. But when I start adding all of these black outlines and things, 
all of that is going to be so much better. So let me find a good brush. I like to use a round tipped brush when I do this part. This one might be good. Okay, and I put it in my mouth to wet the tip just because it was a little bit frayed. Okay, I'm gonna get some black paint. And then I'm just gonna start, probably work from the top down because I'm notorious for getting my arm in the paint. Did the boys like the new paint colors? Yes, Amy, they just got home from camp yesterday and they were like, wow, it looks like a whole new room. And they have been hanging out in their rooms so much more than they were before because they actually like enjoy their rooms once again. So yes, they definitely love the new paint colors and they've been having a blast in there. They actually are playing with their toys again too, which they haven't played with toys in a while. And I think it was just because they had so much junk that they didn't need it all. And so once I got rid of half the junk they didn't need and organized it and redid their rooms, they like actually could find the toys they wanted to play with and they had room on the floor to play. So um, that's been really nice. I don't know how long it'll last, but hopefully for a while. Okay, so look how much better his ear looks because I added that black outline. So we're just gonna keep doing that all the way around this door hanger. I'm gonna start with his eyebrows and just, I'm just defining all of the little parts. Pretty much everywhere there were pencil lines, I'm going to outline with black paint. Have Travis help you, I'm doing a video. <laughs> Go have Travis help you. <laughs> she must have gone to potty and she needed help getting her panties untangled. And apparently mom's the only one in the house that can help her with that. <laughs> Hi, Carla, how are you? Okay, I'm also outlining his eyes. Now this part may feel like intimidating because you feel like you have to get, you know, a smooth line. Like if you'll notice, I'm continually re-dipping my brush. If you're uncomfortable using a brush, I recommend trying a paint pen or even just a Sharpie. But you know, these little round tipped brushes if, are, are pretty good because you have lots of control with them. So just start doing small sections with short strokes and prop your hand on the door hanger. Like I've got my hand braced against the door hanger so that I can have a steady hand. And then I also like to think of it as I'm pulling the brush toward me when I'm doing the stroke. Um, I feel like that gives me more control. I'm not sure why, but it works for me. So, um, I'm pulling the brush toward me to make most of my paint strokes. And so I continually rotate my door hanger too, so that I'm constantly pulling the paintbrush toward me. Travis, help her with her panties, please. I'm almost done with my video. I'll come help you in a minute. Never fails when I go on Facebook Live. Everybody needs mom at once. <laughs> Callie says, you're going to join Painters Clubhouse next go round. You're looking forward to ways to revamp your business so you can reopen. Awesome, girl. I'm excited to have you join. Um, hey, girl designs. I'm using, you know what? It's all rubbed off of this one. I'm going to bet it's probably a round tip number three. Yeah, I mean the paint colors, like the numbers missing off of it, so I'm not sure. But it's a round tipped brush and it's really tiny. You shake so bad trying to do the straight lines. Oh, Deb, have you tried to doing a Sharpie or something that might give you more control? I've heard that the Sharpie brand paint, sounds like they're killing each other out there in the hallway. Um, I've heard that the Sharpie brand paint pens, the ones that are water-based are really good. I have never personally tried them. I've had a hard time finding them around here. So I'm wanting to order some of them online and give them a try, but I've heard that they're really good. So you might try something kind of like that.
Okay, after we get all these outlines on here, I'm gonna go back and add some highlights and stuff to really just make him pop so that he comes alive and looks a little bit three-dimensional. Not yet. I'm going to connect those little pads of his foot. You love the Sharpie paint pens. You get them at Joann's. Karen, we don't have a Joann's around here. So, maybe I can order them online on Joann's. The closest Joann's is about an hour and a half drive from here. I may have to make a trip. I need some more black paint. Oh, thank you for sharing the video, Carla. I appreciate it. Did you um, join the free Facebook group that we've started, the pop-up group? If you haven't yet, type the word join in the comments and it'll send you a link to go over there and join. I've already got a tutorial in there and um, a jigsaw, jigsaw tutorial and a free template for painting a rooster door hanger. Okay, and then for this part, like, I'm probably just going to do, an, like, an outline with the black pen, pen just to give it some definition. And then I might add a couple little lines in there like that for his tail. Kind of just making this one up as I go because this is the first time I've ever painted it. So I'm figuring it out and figuring out what it needs as I'm painting with you guys. I forgot to mention that um, for those of you who join the Painters Clubhouse in July, you'll have the extra added benefit of being able to go back and watch old tutorials that I've put up that I have put in the Painters Clubhouse since the beginning of April. So, you know, anytime you're bored and want to paint another door hanger, you'll be able to go back and watch those old videos and get those old templates. They're in the archive. And you can just download them and watch them at your convenience. I need to get a smile on him. He looks a little bit mad right now. Get his little smile on here. Hakuna Matata. Almost. Go play. <laughs> Not yet. Go play. Okay. I feel like it needs some outlines around the edge. So let's go around the edge. And maybe add an outline for his foot right here because that feels a little funny. Your outlines don't always have to connect all the way around either. Um, sometimes it can just be uh, like a, a streak or a loose line that's not connected and that's okay. And that might be less nerve wracking for you, especially like for Deb who um, feels like your hands are shaky by just doing a streak or a shorter line. You know, you don't feel like you have to have it quite so perfect.
Okay, I feel like that's all the black outlining we need. Now we need some highlights. So here's what we've got so far. <laughs> that smile made a world of difference. <laughs> yes, because he was kind of looking kind of like, you know, his eyebrows are looking a little frowny, but when we added that smile, he looked so much happier. Okay, for the highlights, I'm gonna switch to um, a round tipped brush. It's much bigger than my outlining brush. And I just, I don't know, I just feel like I like it for short strokes because it holds lots of paint. And so I'm just gonna add little white highlights in places that feel like it needs a little bit of light. Like if it feels one dimensional or flat, that's when you know you need to add some highlights. And so just kind of do it on the top side of whatever it is you're painting so that it looks kind of like the light is hitting it. So I'm gonna do it on the top side of his nose. And then for his eyes, I'm just gonna do a little dot in each eye. Oh, that really made him come alive too adding those little dots. Doesn't that make his eyes look so much better? And so um, I'm gonna add just a little bit inside his ears and above the top of his ears. And then maybe a little bit right up here on this little tuft of hair on top of his head. Um, and then maybe just a little bit on the cheeks. But I feel like that may be all he needs. How cute. And so, um, I don't know what the baby's name is going to be. I need to message the customer, but I may put the baby's name like right across here and then hang a plate below it with the birth info on it. And I think that'll be really cute. So once I get all of that done and I have it ready to go to the person it belongs to, um, I'll post a picture for you guys to see it. But there he is. How adorable. His nose looks kind of white in the, in the video, but it's very much pink. Um, I'm really pleased with all these paint colors. They're all, like I said, deco art paint colors. And if you wanna write down the names of the paint colors, go back to the beginning of the video. I listed them out. You can just write them down. Um, oh, Mackenzie says you're terrible at highlighting. Keep going, Mackenzie. Don't give up on it. You will get better at it. Um, in the beginning, when I first started painting door hangers, I would look at photos of other door hangers that I had seen on Pinterest and whatnot. And I would be like, okay, she put a white mark there and she put a white mark here. And, and, you know, I would try to like emulate exactly what I had seen. And that's just how I was teaching myself. And so now that I'm designing my own door hangers and coming up with this stuff completely on my own, I have just kind of like, because I've emulated for so long, I now know where to put those things based on where I've put them in the past, if that makes sense. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you want to join the free group, the pop-up group, type the word join and it will send you a link to your Facebook Messenger so that you can join the group. And um, I would love to have you guys in the group with me. And the Painters Clubhouse opens back up July 26th through the 31st. So I would love to have you guys hop in there as well. All right, well, I'm going to hop off here and go eat some lunch and see what my kids need because they've been banging on the door. All right, well, you guys have a wonderful Saturday afternoon, and I'll see you again later. Bye-bye.